Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Another day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is our final day that we're diving deep into the disciple, the apostle, Philip. Philip not seen much in the New Testament, just going to recourse that, repeat that. Um, and he's not Philip in Acts, later on in Acts. We get to see that he is an apostle. He is one of the 12 disciples that then sent into a, apostles, the 11 apostles. Then they take in um, another apostle in Acts, beginning of Acts. But he's not Philip that's talking with the Ethiopian eunuch um, and being able to describe uh, the, Philip the evangelist. He is Philip the apostle. And so as we have those distinguishing factors, we still get to understand that as he was a disciple, he got to see Jesus' miracles and ministry and his way of going about discipling Philip as well. And in John chapter 14, we get one of the final times that we get to hear about Philip, um, besides right at the beginning of Acts when they list the disciple or the apostles. Um, but we get to hear Philip questioning and asking Jesus a certain question as well. We don't usually go there. We kind of stop at John 14 verse 6. A lot of times Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me and goes on to say, and then all of a sudden we get into verse 8 and Philip shows up because he asks a question. And I want to take this into this question was asked. Jesus reveals the truth. Then he actually walks forward because John chapter 14 is really on the night, 14 through 17, on the night of his betrayal, on the night of the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night right before his crucifixion. So it is a fast forward here in John. Uh, we get to see him in Holy Week in these last chapters. Um, and now we get to see him going forward, talking to disciples, saying, I'm going to have to go away from you, but that's going to glorify the Son. And... I'm going to have to go away because you're going to see even greater things and you're going to do greater things. And so we get to see that um, uh, Philip was right in the midst of witnessing the depravity and, and the uh, sorrow of the crucifixion, being able to be ministered and just overjoyed by the resurrection. And so where did that send Philip? That's where we'll end today. But John chapter 14, beginning at verse 6, I'll just read it again. Let's read it together. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him because he is me, right? I am of him. And Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. <laughs> put the stamp right at the end. Uh, put no um, put no halts on what we believe, how we believe. You're, you're speaking these things. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, kind of sounds the I am, that you are God. We have confessed to you, God. But hey, just show us the Father, and we won't ask any more questions. That will be enough. <laughs> and Jesus answers, says, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, we get to see that Philip was there for those three years, that long time, even before that, knowing Jesus before the call to his ministry. We get to see this as it says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? There is no separation. There is separation of the person. Here we go. We kind of try to explain the Trinity. Can't explain the Trinity. It's a mystery of God. But there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yet they are one and not three, but yet they are three and not and still one. Interesting. Can't solve that, but he's saying, how can you say, show us the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am a represent. I am God in front of you. Don't you believe, says verse 10, don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. They are of the Father's, right? It is the word of God. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. These are divine actions, right? I tell you the truth, verse 12, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Just kind of a nice little education on how we should pray. You ever wonder why people say, in Jesus' name we pray? Amen. Because ask whatever you would like in my name. And if that is the will of God, if that brings it, brings glory to God, it's in the power of Jesus' name that is of the mission of God, 
that is accomplishing these things. But here is Philip asking this question. And as Philip's asking that question, Jesus is just setting forth the truth and saying, you're going to see even greater things. Actually, the glory of God, you're going to see, and you're going to see it tomorrow. You're going to see it when I'm hanging on a tree, even though Philip's not at the presence of that cross, he flees. But he's going to know about it. He's going to hear about it. But then he's also going to be in that upper room that night of the resurrection as Jesus comes in and says, peace be with you. And he's going to be overwhelmed by the sight, the greater things that he's going to see, that someone was dead and now they're alive. This must be of God. Yeah, I don't need to see the Father. That's not going to just be, I will see enough of what Jesus has done. Yes, through the miracles, but all through, through his crucifixion and resurrection. And so what does that do? It makes Philip do greater things, as every disciple encounters. The crucifixion and resurrection just doesn't leave us for mundane lives. Actually, within the disciples, they all go to their martyrdom, right? Here, Philip, as we get to see, I'm just going to look, look this up real quick um, and read it to you. Uh, sorry, I just had it fingered before. And taking a look here. Oh, come on. Oh, I lost the page, and it's going to be too long for me to find it for you. However, Philip, what did he do? He did greater things. He died a martyr's death, but he went into being a missionary. We get to see his, uh, through legend, through tradition, he went all the way up through the Black Sea, as we get to see he was all the way up in Scythia, as it was back then. And then Phrygia, which is kind of by Galatia, which kind of Paul did his missionary work right there um, in Turkey, as we get to, to see, but also Syria. Syria is just north of Jerusalem, north Israel. And so you get to see some of these three places and his marks that he made on the church of being a missionary. And what did he do? He did what we talked about in these last videos. He was that missionary invitation. Come and see, come and hear about something that absolutely was breathtaking for my life, the divine action of God in Jesus Christ. And so as we get to see what Philip was, we get to see here. It's hard to say, I'm just going to read this because I just want to bring this up. It's hard to say how Philip died, especially since he was confused with Philip the Evangelist, you know, of, of Acts. And there are conflicting accounts. But one record says that he died of natural causes, Another says he was beheaded or stoned to death or crucified upside down. <laughs> but the real big tradition of it is most likely it wasn't of natural causes because they speak to the only one really kind of dying of natural causes, and Jesus said that in the scriptures, was going to be John. And John did die of natural causes, although he was exiled, um, as we talked a couple, time, a couple weeks ago. But within Philip here, he died a martyr's death. That's pretty well known in tradition. How he died, whether it was beheaded, stoned, or crucified upside down, we are not positive about. But most of the early traditions seem to point to his martyrdom at Heropolis. And so just throwing out that region, that city uh, there. But once again, persecution happening within the Christians. But here it is. Here it is. He says, Jesus says it right towards, right in the face of P uh, P uh, Philip. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And as Philip experienced the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, it altered his life that he says, I'm going to follow that way. I'm going to live that truth. And my life is going to be full by just being a person of the gospel. I pray that we can make that confession this day as well. Even in to death. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to follow Jesus' way. That's the truth that I'm going to live. And what is his truth? His truth is God's word. The foundation of how God's designed this world, created us for what purpose. That's the truth. What is truth? Truth is Jesus. I am the way. I'm going to follow Jesus. I am the truth. I'm going to do what Jesus did. Care for people. Have compassion. Um, lead people to the glory of God. And I'm going to be able to say, as it says here, I'm going to have a life filled with, with purpose, life filled with joy, life f lived to the fullest, as Jesus said, because he is life. And now I have been dead in my sins and arisen through my baptism to live in Christ. So, Philip experiences, brothers and sisters, you and I have experienced, I pray that we're overwhelmed and joyful to live 
in truth and the way of Jesus. And Lord, take us to where you want us. Take us where you want us because our confession is that you are the way, the truth, and the life and that my life is actually yours. So take us to the places that people need to hear. Come and see. Come and look. Come and hear that Jesus is for you and he always will be with you. What a blessed message. Brothers and sisters, let us be disciples of Christ. Yeah, like Philip, but we don't need to be relative to Philip. We have the same Spirit of God that gave Philip that incredible overjoyment of life to be able to go into all those regions and declare a simple truth, a simple message. Jesus loves us, he died for us, and he is with us because he's alive. Have a blessed day, confessing and walking in that faith.